today on Control Freaks, we bring you the big news from me 3 The race is on to Athens 2004, and Riddick makes his console debut in Vivendi Universal's blockbuster Xbox shooter, The Chronicles of Riddick Escape from Butcher Bay. So sit back and put down your controller as we take you to Los Angeles, California. There's no bigger news than E3 2004. The world's largest names in interactive entertainment converged on the Los Angeles Convention Center to show off their latest and greatest software and hardware. For publishers and developers, there's no better opportunity to close deals. More business is done in this single week than any other time of the year. For the marketing guys, it's a feeding frenzy of press coverage. Gamers are hungry for the news that's gonna rock their gaming world. And a few worlds will rock this year, with some old favourites and new surprises stealing the limelight. The biggest revelation of E3 this year is the gargantuan battle about to be waged on the handheld front. Nintendo raised the roof of its press conference with a demonstration of the successor to the Game Boy Advance SP, the Game Boy DS. Nintendo's new unit sports some very impressive features and a refreshingly tactile approach to gameplay, boasting two TFT screens that can be used in a multitude of ways, including touch screens. Sony's first foray into the handheld gaming market seems destined for success, as the PSP was the talk of the show, and although the models on display were limited, everybody wanted to see them, and everybody who saw them wanted one. Sony definitely has a knack for designing hardware that screens by me. More than just a games machine, the PSP is the Walkman of the 21st century, boasting features enabling you to listen to music, watch movies, and play your favourite games. Nokia's new N-Gage was launched with much fanfare in the round and an impressive lineup of third-party support. Nokia have learnt a lot over the past 12 months and the new unit looks much slicker and the swag of interface improvements promises a friendlier user experience. Add to that, you no longer have to remove the back of your unit to change games. N-Gage will be under enormous pressure with the release of new hardware from Nintendo and Sony and only time will tell if the unit can survive in a very competitive market. Xbox may have had the biggest story by not releasing the news everybody was waiting for. There was no mention of Xbox 2. Obviously the race is on to get the next generation of console hardware to market, but it looks like we'll have to wait another year. Big news for Xbox and EA though, as they announced the integration of Xbox Live into all future EA Sports titles. The relationship we announced with Electronic Arts today around Xbox Live is very significant for our customers. It really brings to life the experiences they've asked us for. They've asked both Electronic Arts and the Xbox team to make sure Electronic Arts games can be played on Xbox Live. And we've delivered on that experience in a big way, with more than 15 titles coming over the next 12 months. That's how we meet customers' needs. That's how we create a great gaming experience on Xbox. Speaking of hardware, Infinium Labs had its first showing of the Phantom console, and we got to see one in the flesh. Oh, should we say plastic? A device designed to cross the bridge between the computer room and the lounge room, the Phantom was attracting quite a lot of interest. We did like the unique lap keyboard mouse device too. While we're talking input devices, E3 2004 was the year the controller took a back seat. Sure, the majority of games use your trusty gamepad, but there were more options for gamers this year. iToy had a strong showing with more titles integrating the unit into gameplay as standalone or mini games. Sony have also released SingStar, taking on the karaoke challenge with some impressive software that actually judges your singing performance. In the upcoming official Athens Olympic title, players can use a dance mat to run races. Apart from the touchscreen on the DS, Nintendo showed off the bongos, a new and very original way to play your games. Plus, the continuing popularity of steering wheels and guns had gamers in their element, yet again. Unholy demons! While I live, Castle Hawkmore will never fall! The victory! Yeah! 
Capcom's popular medieval fantasy platform adventure has returned with the release of Maximo Army of Zin. Help me! Monsters are attacking my village! Please help us! The first Maximo made a name for itself as one of the most challenging and possibly most frustrating adventure side-scrollers ever released. Maximo Army of Zin builds on that tradition in this 3D sequel. The storyline has stayed true to form, with Maximo still searching for the love of his life, Sophia. His best pal is still the Grim Reaper, and he still wears boxer shorts under his armour. Oh, and this game is still about battle. Have sword, will slice, dice and carve. The Army of Zin is a bunch of evil robots powered by lost souls. These are your main foe, and in true platform fashion, there is an even bigger, nastier, evil soul-powered robot at the end of each level. Yep, the boss is still alive and well. As far as gameplay goes, there are a few more changes. Firstly, Maximo has a bit of a superhero complex now and it's his job to keep the villagers that he comes across in his travels safe. Huh? This adds a little more purpose to the quest, rather than just looking for the keys and the shortest route to level completion. While we're on that subject, Army of Zin is a lot more linear than its predecessor, and you are pretty much guided in the right direction. Maximo's underwear plays a larger role this time round, with particular boxer shorts giving Maximo special abilities. Another thing you'll notice is you can play Reaper whenever the Grim Meter is full. Don't get too used to it though, if you blink twice or scratch yourself, you'll be reverting back to Maximo before you had a chance to experience the joy of death. Like most platformers, it's all about collecting. For Maximo, it's coins. This time round, all the good gear can't be found just lying around in a pot or under a chest. This time Maximo has to buy his way to groovy gladiator style glory, even special moves. The visuals and gameplay are a little disappointing, but as the game progresses, so does the quality. One feels that the developers could have gone back to the first few levels and tightened them up a bit, just to add more interest. After all, the first few levels are the ones we play first, and a gamer can quickly be lost if it doesn't play well in the shop. All up, Maximo Army of Zin is a satisfying platform game. Cutscenes are done well, and gameplay and controls are okay. If you enjoy the combination of platform and adventure, with a little humour thrown in, then this may be the next game for you. You must rescue those souls! I'm on it, Grim. Here. If you need me, just use the coin. Thanks. Are you sure I'll be needing this? Oh, yeah. I guarantee you will. on Control Freaks, Riddick makes it to the Xbox, and five games make it to the most wanted list. Control Freaks! If you're looking for a handheld RPG packed with turn-based menu-driven combat, then Golden Sun The Lost Age delivers. The almost too lengthy opening recap provides all the background you need to catch up on the story behind the Golden Sun series. 
Your team of travellers continues the journey while battling a range of enemies using well-animated physical attacks, magical element-based synergy and the ability to unleash special moves performed by your djinn. Golden Sun, the Lost Ages graphics and gameplay have surpassed its predecessor's high level of quality. Our rating for this GBA game, four and a half stars. to keep this game going. In this eye-catching release, ice hockey finals are in your hands and you can experience the, the sweet the taste of victory even if it takes a few knocks and bruises to get you there. Skavich carries it past the red line. And he takes a wrist shot. The Florida Panthers. ESPN is right behind this game, so playing and listening to it is almost like watching the real thing, not to mention the camera angles and player moves that mimic a real-life broadcast. The fast pace of gameplay means keep your eye on the puck or duck. We gave National Hockey League 2K3 three and a half stars. In Monkey Ball Jr., you have to guide your ball through 60 progressively difficult floors filled with steps, bumps, moving platforms and more. It's addictive, challenging, infuriating and fun. The four mini games are great, especially in multiplayer mode, and help you to calm down after another hour on that tricky level. These include Monkey Bowling, Monkey Fight, Monkey Golf, and Monkey Duel. This game may send you bananas, but you'll have a ball. Baller. Super Monkey Ball Junior rocks. Well, rolls. Four stars. Metroid Prime has landed on the GameCube and has to be seen to be believed. Bounty Hunter Samus returns slicker than ever in this 3D first-person adventure shooter. From the moment Samus lands on Talon 4, she's plunged into a huge and highly detailed environment. With particle effects like rain droplets appearing on her visor to heat haze rising from her gun, her surroundings seem to react with every movement, creating an intense sense of atmosphere as Samus travels through the extremely well-designed levels. Best of all, there are no loading screens, which means seamless transitions between areas. Samus has a powerful array of weapons at her disposal. Wave, ice and plasma beams, missiles and of course her trademark Morph Ball. While it may be frustrating and takes some time getting a grip on the lock and spin combat setup, when mastered, the controls handle with speed and precision in battle. Exploration is the key to the game with vast regions to investigate. Although some backtracking is required, you'll normally be rewarded with a new item or power-up and entry to previously inaccessible areas. Visors are used to deliver information that is vital for solving puzzles, defeating bosses and gathering planet history. In Total Darkness, the thermal visor reveals hidden enemies, while from behind a wall, the X-ray visor shows all. Our tip, scan everything. Samus has lost none of her charm in the transition from her humble 2D side-scrolling beginnings to this 3D graphical delight. While staying true to Metroid's heritage, Retro Studios have delivered an action-packed adventure that will have you deciphering many secrets for hours of extended play above and beyond the battles. Wipeout, with its incredible futuristic graphics and music by well-known ambient music acts, was quickly identified as the best game on the PS1. And it was reported that shortly after its launch, a copy of the game was being bought with every new PlayStation. The game set new standards for graphics, design and sound, enlisting the artistic talents of the Designer Republic and music from the Chemical Brothers and Left Field. This was the first time that game developers looked outside their own offices for greater creative input. Cygnosis changed the way games are made and their legacy still lives on. Only the cunning will survive. 
Coming up on Control Freak, Half-Life 2 tops the wanted list and Richard Burns gives us the inside line on his latest rally title. I'm a Control Freak. With more colloquial cliches than an outback pub, Ty the Tasmanian Tiger brings a big dose of Ocker Aussie culture to the gaming world, and it's just bonza. The feisty Ty jumps, runs, bites and rangs his way through portals full of magical levels. He must track down rare thunder eggs needed to obtain the five talismans required to free his family. Every level has eight goals to complete, although four of these objectives are always the same. Collect 300 opals, rescue five bilbies, complete a timed race and beat the boss. Soon unimaginable power will be mine, mine, mine. Ty has 12 different boomerangs to be earned and mastered, each with their own special purpose. Luckily, controlling Ty is simple, with new moves easy to learn, keeping the game flowing at a steady pace. Whilst providing a cleverly presented twist on a very familiar style of 3D platform game, Ty the Tasmanian Tiger is not particularly challenging, with enemies easily targeted and defeated, even when on the run. With a great script and storyline, the voices are definitely a highlight, as Ty comes across a cast of quirky Australian characters who will have you laughing with their cheeky antics and colourful conversation. Root. Sounds like you've got a fair dinkum adventure ahead of you, mate. The background scenery is a showcase of Australian landscapes, rich in colour and with detail that may not be noticed at first glance. No Aussie icon has been forgotten right down to the outdoor dunny which serves as a continue point should Ty bite the proverbial dust. Comical cutscenes merge seamlessly into the flow of the game. Best of all, you can fast forward through them if you want to get straight back into the action. No! A fair dinkum Aussie extravaganza, definitely worth playing. Wait, think, breathe, concentrate. 10 seconds to go, I put the car into gear. Five seconds to go. Floor the throttle. Zero. It's always a challenge to create a game that sets out to be the most realistic of its kind. In the world of rally games, this title belongs to Richard Burns Rally. All I've done since I was 15 is to drive rally cars. That's all I've ever wanted to do. I was first approached by SCI and Warthog after I'd become the World Rally Champion in 2001. When making this game, we focused on four key elements. These are revolutionary graphics and design, the most advanced sound engine, realistic gameplay, and a seamless mode of game flow. With these combined elements, we've succeeded in creating a game that truly captures the pure rallying experience. From the very first stages through to actually playing the game, it was very interesting to see how the developers incorporated my knowledge. I'm amazed at how accurate the simulation is. This game is different in the way that speed is no longer the only winning factor. It takes intelligent tactics, risk management, consistency, and a decisive approach. 
For the first time, a player has the unique opportunity to manage their entire rally career in conditions that mirror a real-life championship. 300. When you're racing at speed, nothing else matters apart from what's going on immediately around you. This game puts you in that place. It puts you literally in the driver's seat. It takes more than just a great driver to be champion. When the pressure threatens to throw it all away, that's when the control kicks in. Richard Burns Rally. It is here that champions are made. Next week on Control Freaks, it's all games and it's all good. We road test Need for Speed Underground. Scoop an exclusive with the developer behind Riddick, and there's more thumb-pumping, finger-busting joystick action from the big bad world of video games. Oh, Control Freaks!